What is going on guys, Lamar St. Ring has a brand new episode of Washington Station, the best stage for Washington Football Nation. Now today, I know this video is a little late, I know it's a little late, um, but we're going to be talking about the draft, how the draft went, how did I predict it well, because I did, and yeah, so let's just go through, we're just going to run through the list, and let's talk about every pick. So let's start first with Jamin Davis. We already talked about this last Friday, but um, in case you didn't see that video, I am super hyped about Jamin Davis, super athletic, super physical linebacker. He's going to really help Colt Holcomb in the back. And John Bosick did his, you know, he, he wasn't bad, but, you know, this team's really going to, uh, I think the defense is going to be much more physical with him because he's a bit younger and a bit, he's just a bit more athletic and ready to um get after the quarterback and can also go into coverage and can also run stop well. Our next pick, and I will say, some of these names I could pronounce terribly. If it happens, it just happens. So, number two, our number two pick in round two was offensive tackle out of Texas, Samuel Cosme, or Cosme, whatever it is. Um, man, watching this tape, this guy can be a really good offensive tackle. Um, on the other hand, uh, we are bringing in, um, what's his first name? Pano, I think it's the name. Leno, Charles Leno from Chicago who got cut. We're bringing him in and, um, we might sign him. If he's, if we sign him, I see Samuel taking a, uh, kind of a bench year and learning and growing in the system and then coming to start maybe the year after that. Um, I'm a big fan of us pursuing Charles Leno and another player I'll talk about in a few minutes. But, uh, yeah, same with Cosme. You know, we're so close to having a full-on offense. we got a full-on defense. And what we really need for an offense is just a stable line and just other receivers. And I think we attacked all that this offseason. We got Eric Flowers back. We got Curtis Samuel. We got Adam Humphreys. And we got Ryan Fitzpatrick, and we brought back Taylor Heineke and Kyle Allen, Logan Thomas, you know, Samuel Rays, the tight end. Um, so, yeah, we had in the lineup we already had with Rulier, Sheriff, and Moses is now having the addition of Sam or possibly Charles, which I think will solidify our O line and have us really ready to go for the season. And having Sammy on the bench really gives us some depth at the O-line position, where we have some depth in some other areas, but maybe not in this position. And it puts in question Jerron Christian's um, roster spot. Uh, so I really like that pick. I was um, very excited for us to go offensive line early in the draft, which I kind of predicted. I'm going to say that a lot in this video because I predicted pretty much everything. The only thing I will say, there's one thing I did not predict to happen to happen and there's one thing that I predicted to happen that did not happen I'm fine with both one is I predicted us to pursue quarterback in the mid to late rounds we did not do that which I think is fine I don't think there's any harm in not going after a quarterback um, but anyway round three pick 74 we got cornerback out of Minnesota Benjamin St. Juice Juice just I don't know Benjamin, uh, man, this guy, uh, we might run him at a little bit of safety and corner. I uh, heard that could be a potential thing, but I think uh, Jack said that we're going to keep him at corner, and also he said the same thing, we're going to keep Landon at safety. I think I've spoken before about him possibly moving to linebacker. Um, I think that could still happen, but he asked Landon to come in a little lighter. I think the reason a lot of fans wanted him to play linebacker is because of the way he was built, and I think if he comes in lighter like Jack Dorio has asked him to, He's really going to um, play faster as much as we need because he's a good player. We just need to see it. We need to see it again because we know it's there. We just need to see it. But, yeah, Benjamin St. Juice really adds some depth to our corner position. We got William Jackson, Daryl Roberts, Kendall Fuller. Um, what's his name? Jimmy Moreland. And so I'm excited to see. And Greg Stroman, he's still there. Danny Johnson's still there. Can't remember. And so just to add some depth and really just he's a big physical guy, really uh good in the coverage. Watch I watch as an um I'm proud of this. Every guy that we drafted, I've watched their tape. Um so I do know a little bit of how each of these players uh plays. 
So I know what I'm talking about. Next is out of UNC, North Carolina, Deami Brown. Man, this guy. This guy. This guy. He's going to be a deep threat. You know, I think he's going to be a great addition to the um, group that Terry and Curtis will be grouped into. Um, it puts a lot of receivers in question. You know, they're going to get spots like Steven Sims, uh, Gandy Golden, Kelvin Harmon. Um, yeah, I, I, that really puts a lot into perspective because our receiver room is slowly getting loaded. And there's some players that I would hate to see go, but, you know, I. I Kind of come to terms with some of these players that I really like might not make it another season because the room, unless they make a big jump in training camp or preseason, we're going to need to see a lot out of them to make the team. But Deami Brown, such a deep threat man, such a good receiver, great route runner, uh, just excellent, excellent hands. Ball handling was really good, man. That. Whew, this guy could be electric. This guy could be electric. He might be our steal of the draft. Round we always do pretty good in round three. We either do really good or really bad in round three, and I feel confident about this one. Next is in round four, pick one thirty four, tight end John Bates out of Boise State. He is essentially Jeremy Sprinkle's replacement. He's got better hands than Jeremy Sprinkle, but he's slower. I think he's going to compete for the tight end two and three spot. Him and Sammy Reyes, I believe, will be the two and three with Logan Thomas obviously being the first. But, you know, he's going to be a blocking tight end. I think they want another tight end that can be physical like Sprinkle was supposed to be. But Sprinkle could never get to that level of production. So I think we, with um, John Bates, we really want him to have that kind of production where he's really the big man that's really moving people out the way. Next is safety Derek Forrest out of Cincinnati. This guy um, can play a little bit of linebacker, but we're going to keep him at safety, it looks like. And um, I'm excited for him, big physical guy. He can really disrupt the pass, disrupt the run. Enjoyed his play, good pick. One thing about our draft this year, and I'm going to say this now, is it's not the popular picks. These are not the popular picks, not like what everyone wanted. And I said this multiple times, it's because we're in win now mode. We are now in win now mode. We are so close. We we were the best team that Tampa Bay faced in the whole playoffs. So Ron knows we are in win now. So he's acting like it, meaning he is drafting players in positions of need. And if there's a draft class that has positions of need in everyone, we got it. We absolutely had the best draft in that case, in my opinion. And um. Derek Forrest is another addition to help build the safety room. It consists of Landon and Jeremy and Cameron and one more possibly, which could be Bobby McCain, the starter that came that just got cut by the Miami Dolphins. He is also visiting Monday with Charles Leno. I would hope we can bring him in. He's a big disruptor in the past, really can disrupt the play, can read defenses very well, electric guy. I'm excited to see him. Next in round six, pick 225, from Philly, actually, surprisingly, was Cameron Cheeseman, long snapper out of Michigan. Obviously, not a whole lot to be said here. It's just awesome. We got a man called Cheeseman. I think everyone, the media is having a field day with that. And, you know, he's going to be Nick Sunberg's replacement. I hate seeing Nick Sunberg go. He's been there since I became a fan of Washington. But, you know, things are changing, and I'm excited to see him team up with Tressway and Dustin Hopkins. So let's just hope he can snap the good balls at Tress and D-Op and that's all I can really say about that one. Next is round seven. Pick 240 from San Francisco through the Philly trade is William Bradley King, defensive end out of Baylor. Oh, man. Our Baylor picks in the past haven't gone too well, so let's hope this one goes better. But, uh, you know, he's a big physical guy. He can really disrupt the pass and uh, really stop the run. When you get to the round seven ones, you just kind of you kind of find a couple things to say and then move on. But, uh, yeah, I, I like this pick. I think it's good because really behind Chase Young and Montez, there's not a whole lot of depth unless we went back and re-signed Kerrigan. And so seeing some more pieces being added to the puzzle really helps um, build this defense. That's one thing I I don't know if I think I kind of said we wouldn't do, but we ended up doing is um, going after defensive line. I didn't think about it until someone pointed out, like, on the day of the draft. I was like, 
we're going to need depth at the line. I'm like, oh, shoot. Yeah, we do. And I'm glad we attacked that. We, we got one for both sides. We got William Radley King. And then in round seven, pick 246, we got Shaka Tony, defensive end out of Penn State. Also, just a great guy. He can disrupt the pass. One of the more, um seems like, physical guys um, that kind of dropped in the draft. And I'm glad we picked up. I think it's going to be a big ad. Like I said, these these picks are to back up Chase and Montez to give this some depth. Um, and, you know, who knows how much playing time we're going to get. Um, but, you know, I think they're both locks for the team. And I'm excited to see um, them produce. And lastly, but not least, out of the College of BYU, round seven, pick 258 through KC, through Miami, we got Dax Malani, receiver, out of BYU, Dax Malin, I don't know, Malene, something like that. Uh, anyway, um, he was... Zach Wilson's number one target at BYU. Really good receiver. Uh, good, just standard receiver. I would kind of say kind of that route runner tight that Garcon was. Um, the top receiver there. Surprised he fell as far as he did um, with as much as he did with Zach Wilson. But, you know, I'm glad we got him. Like I said, he's adding to that loaded receiver room we have, which I think could put some pressure on Kelvin Harmon and Gandy and Steven Sims that – you know, just this receiver room is going to be tough to get into. It's going to be tough to get into. But yeah, that's my quick review over everyone that we drafted in this year's draft. I really enjoyed how we did it. I, I would rate us maybe like an A minus in how we drafted. Um, I think there's a couple things we could have done better, but I'm really pleased with how we did. I'm excited to see all these guys at training camp and in the season hopefully produce. And, yeah, I really enjoyed it. So comment down your thoughts below about our draft, and I'll catch you all later. Make sure to subscribe if you already. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed. Make sure to hit that bell button so every single time of a brand new video to the channel or episode of Washington Station. I'm Morse, and I'm out. Peace. Oh, and also, FedEx Field, full capacity, 2021. Let's go.